If the whole internet were very fast and efficient, users would never suffer waiting for a page to load, and there would never have been any interest in creating content delivery networks. Obviously, this is not the case. Let's try to understand how contemporary networks function. At present, it is very easy to create a system, especially in a cloud, where demand exceeds supply. As a result, when more and more users appear, the requested connection becomes very slow to establish, or sometimes almost impossible. A good network architecture may minimize these problems, which is why the main goal of a content delivery network is to create an efficient and fail active network. But what would such a network look like? What would be its main characteristics? Let's try to understand what makes some networks efficient and others less so. The most basic source of network inefficiency is found in the way traditional internet clients communicate with internet servers. Here's how it works. If nine copies of a video game installed on nine different devices all require updates, all nine devices will request updates from the video game server at almost exactly the same time. Since the server has a limit on the number of simultaneous requests it can handle, most devices will have to wait their turn to get the data. This also creates an additional burden on the video game server because each device tries to load updates from the same source at almost the exact same moment. Every game device gets the data from the same server rather than connecting to other game devices that have already been updated. A more efficient procedure exists. Once several game devices have received updates from the server, they begin to pass those updates directly to other game devices. This kind of network is called peer-to-peer -peer because the network here does not depend on a centralized server to manage data distribution. Instead, each member of a network can transfer verified and encrypted data to every other node that it is connected to. A peer-to-peer -peer network allows for the distribution of any kind of data among all connected devices rather than forcing each device to load updates from one overloaded source, that is, the server. The information in a peer-to-peer -peer network can be transmitted very quickly because each node can connect to several other nodes and transmit data. Even if each node can exchange data with only two other nodes, the volume of data passing through the network grows exponentially. One node updates two other nodes, two nodes update four other nodes, four nodes update eight nodes, and so on. Earlier in this talk, we mentioned content delivery networks, also called CDNs. These networks are the traditional solution to overcome the bottleneck created by the transmission of content from one server that's trying to distribute data directly to thousands or millions of devices. These CDNs are built from dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of servers that receive data from the initial source and then distribute the load for onward delivery. A typical CDN of a popular video game company can be built from a multitude of game servers located on every continent. Any device can connect to the nearest server to get updates. This helps relieve the central server from the multitude of requests. However, it is very expensive to create and support a CDN because the company has to buy, install, and pay operating costs for many network servers and the number of servers transmitting game updates or other content will still be finite. It's true that there's not just a single point of content delivery delivering the full volume of data, but the CDN still consists of a relatively small number of servers coping with an always growing global data load. If the game goes viral and has millions of downloads, it can create problems for as many servers as are in the network. The result is that while a CDN will, of course, increase the network's efficiency, the overall system is an expensive hardware solution with limited scale. NewNode solves this problem with the creation of a decentralized content delivery network, where data transmission can always happen on a peer-to-peer -peer level. This solution helps keep content available if a direct connection with a web server is slow, or even if that connection is disrupted or cut off. To stay with the video game example, if a game company uses a decentralized CDN like NuNode to distribute updates, each gaming device would be able to connect with other devices to create a peer-to-peer -peer network. Simultaneous updates would be sent not from a central server or a traditional CDN, but from a device to a device, because each game device can itself act as a server. If a million game devices are in use around the world, each one has a million potential ways to connect with the other devices to receive and distribute content and updates. It's important to underline that in the video game example, 
This method has the advantage of using an existing network that is large and well distributed, the network consisting of the million connected game devices. By enabling each user device to, to act as a content server, New Node avoids the need to create and maintain an expensive new CDN just to serve content for one game. In New Node, the nodes comprising the decentralized network are mobile devices connected to each other by means of dynamic addresses located within the already robust BitTorrent network. Because BitTorrent exists around the world, the new node nodes can translate their accessibility in a reliable way while identifying themselves securely within the network and connecting to each other. Moreover, new node uses reliable cloud injectors to encrypt and send data from web sources and introduce data into the peer-to-peer -peer network. If a new node enabled device is able to connect to a cloud injector securely and quickly, that device will receive encrypted web content immediately from the initial web source. If the new node enabled device cannot connect to the cloud injector, the device tries to connect to any other new node device, which serves as proxy server for the injector. In this case, if the node serving as the proxy server does not have the requested data yet, the intermediate node will try to load the data from another cloud injector and transmit it immediately to the requesting node. One single node with a function and connection to a cloud injector can very quickly fill the entire peer-to-peer -peer network with the requested data, even if the cloud injectors are unavailable to other nodes due to network congestion, local failures, and or regional blockages. Once the data has entered the new node network at any entry point, that is, once the data has reached one individual new node device, it quickly spreads across the entire network. To understand the scale, consider this. Even with a modest user uptake, say 10 new node enabled mobile apps deployed worldwide with a combined total of 10 million users, the new node network will have close to 10 million nodes capable of sending and receiving data, depending on the number of devices online. Ultimately, new node's decentralized content delivery network will always be several orders of magnitude larger than traditional CDNs, which even at their maximum scale use only hundreds of thousands of servers. The large and ever-growing number of mobile devices in the world, combined with high levels of connectivity, means that the active NUNO network could easily eventually attain a user base comprising something closer to 500 million nodes, forming a distributed network with a size, speed, and flexibility that is not technically feasible with traditional CDN. There is also the potential for any mobile device to use NUNO to increase data transfer rates. The data requested over a peer-to-peer -peer network will be identical to the data from the original web server. In principle, peer-to-peer -peer connections can be much faster and more reliable than traditional CDNs. What's more, another benefit of using new node would be to bypass intentional or collateral website and app lock apps that are increasingly being used around the world, including access restrictions for local networks. New node can be deployed very quickly to meet the diverse network requirements of game developers and publishers, cryptographic clients, multimedia companies, the news media, and many others. In addition, new node can be used as an extra layer of network security since the protocol encrypts all peer-to-peer -peer network data and source site data from cloud injectors, making state or corporate censorship and surveillance impossible. Nunode also functions as protection against certain types of cyber attacks, such as DDoS. Because the network is completely distributed and constantly changing, attackers are unable to pinpoint and suppress a specific web address or address range. Nunode is implemented as an easy-to-deploy software development kit library. Nunode does not require a high level of technical knowledge or the creation of a special infrastructure to deploy and run. Application functionality can be expanded simply by adding literally two lines of code to the new node library. Once the application is modified, the new version can be sent to users as an update. When the update is applied, the end user may not even know that the application has been enabled with new node. No new or extra steps by the user are required. If the end user does notice a difference in the app, it will only be a positive one. Faster content download speeds, a more reliable and stable data connection, and greater ability to send or receive content regardless of censorship, blocking, or cyber attack attempt.
So, to sum up, Renode addresses the shortcomings of existing CDNs by enabling content to be distributed and delivered to users in a manner circumventing connection issues ranging from network congestion to government censorship. Renode protects application infrastructure from DDoS attacks and has strong encryption mechanisms. Renode has the ability to hide data transfer from DPI or deep packet inspection systems and other methods used to control internet traffic. Finally, a recent update has enabled one more important and unique feature on the new node network. Any new node application can now transfer data locally without the internet, literally from device to device using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth signals. It works like this. When there's no internet connection, the app is able to look for another nearby device with new node connectivity. If such a device is found, the new node apps are synchronized with each other and the most recent information received when the internet was still available remains on each user's machine. Apps can also use these off-the-grid connections to exchange messages or other files. Needless to say, this opens up a whole new set of possible applications for new node technology.